Hello and welcome back to the Stacial Wellbeing YouTube channel. I'm Dr Dawn Harper and today I'd like to talk about women and heart disease. And the reason I'd like to talk about women is that I think if I asked most people to describe a typical heart attack victim, they would probably talk about an overweight, middle-aged man, probably very stressed and perhaps smokes and drinks too much. The truth is that heart disease kills twice as many women as breast cancer. Now, of course, a breast lump, I know, terrifies women and it's probably the one symptom that brings a woman through my surgery door quicker than anything else. But women don't think, tend to think of themselves as heart attack victims. And we know that women are less likely to be treated in the same way as men, even by medics. Often women may not necessarily present in the same way as men. So a classic heart attack, for example, or angina pain, is likely to cause what we call a crushing central chest pain. People often say they feel like somebody has a vice around their chest or they're sitting on them. And the pain can radiate up into the jaw or down into the, usually the left arm. And often it's associated with a feeling of nausea. People around the patient may say that they look clammy or grey and sweaty. And sometimes patients will say that they feel short of breath or they have palpitations. But for women, they may not always be that classic. And sometimes women may assume that it's indigestion or they might think that they are having anxiety. The palpitations may be interpreted as an anxiety attack. So it's really important that we as women and that me or we as medics recognise the importance of the possible symptoms of heart disease in women. So if you are somebody who is perhaps getting short of breath more easily when you're out walking or you're getting a bit of what you think is indigestion after a big meal or after you're out exercising or you're just feeling a little bit achy and you just can't quite put your finger on it, it's certainly worth getting checked. The risk factors for heart disease are things like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, being overweight, smoking, being inactive. A family history is very relevant, uh, an unhealthy diet. Now, some of those things you can do nothing about. Of course, your family history is your family history, but a lot of things you can, and contrary to popular belief, you cannot necessarily diagnose high blood pressure or high cholesterol just by the way you look or feel. Patients often tell me that if I, I'm telling them their blood pressure is up, they'll say, well, I feel fine. I've, I've never had a headache. My vision's fine. And, and people often assume that they might get a headache or visual problems if their blood pressure is high. The truth of the matter is that actually in the vast majority of cases, blood pressure can be very high without any symptoms at all. And cholesterol is the same. I have met plenty of people with very unhealthy diets who are very overweight and have beautifully normal cholesterol levels. And the opposite, people who are very slim and active and eat healthily, but their cholesterol is very high. You cannot tell your blood pressure or your cholesterol without getting it checked. And the thing about cholesterol actually is most people probably don't realize that only 20% of your cholesterol comes from what you eat. The other 80% is what your body makes up. So really important, I think, that anyone over 40 should know what their blood pressure is and what their cholesterol is, and that goes for women as well as men. So if that's you, then please make sure that you get that checked. And if you have a strong family history of heart disease or perhaps people collapsing at a relatively young age and maybe there wasn't a clear diagnosis at the time, please do make sure that you get your blood pressure and cholesterol checked, possibly at an even younger age. Weight, of course, is another issue. And you know, we live in a country where, and in a society where being overweight is actually much easier than being a healthy weight. Food, and usually the wrong type of food, is readily available for most people in the UK today, not for everyone I know. We are becoming more sedentary and it's much easier for us to be sedentary today. We have all the gadgets and gizmos. We don't need to do the exercise that perhaps would have, in days gone by, be part of a normal day. So actually fitting exercise into your life can be 
much more difficult um, and we need to proactively think about that but it is really worth investing if you are overweight and um, particularly if you have a family history of high blood pressure or heart disease please do tackle that this is not about what you look like in your clothes this is about your future health and there is plenty of help out there speak to your gp and they can help you we have now we've got some great uh, facilities we can access we can do exercise on prescription um, and that doesn't have to be a gym if you don't like a gym it can be a dance class it can be a walking group anything that gets you out exercising regularly will significantly reduce your risk of heart disease and things like type 2 diabetes and so on I've said this before on this channel, but I'm going to give you the statistic again. If you can walk briskly for 10 consecutive minutes every day, that's not a huge time commitment, but if you can walk briskly for 10 consecutive minutes every day, you will reduce your risk, and this goes for men and women, you will reduce your risk of developing heart disease by 40%. That's a massive reduction for a relatively small investment. So please do try to exercise more. And if you're a smoker, even if you've been a lifelong smoker, there has never been more help available to help you to give up. And it's never too late to give up. We see the benefits of giving up smoking very quickly, even within minutes, your blood pressure will start to fall. And it doesn't take long before your heart starts to recover and your blood pressure falls more consistently. So please, whatever it is that you think might be increasing your risk, address it now and don't ignore any symptoms. Do contact your doctor and anybody who is getting persistent chest pain, that pain I was talking about earlier, that heavy chest pain, symptoms that you can't explain away from anything else, then please, pain like that that is not going away after 10 minutes or so, actually that's a 999 call and getting urgent medical help really does make a huge difference to the outlook. But don't let it get to that. Please just try and address some of those issues before we get to that stage and we can all hope to lead a longer and healthier life. I hope that's helped you. Until next time, take care.